Hi everyone, welcome to part 2 on our video lecture for section 11.1 .1, dealing with the approximation of functions with polynomials. In part 1 of our video, we saw the technique to approximate functions with the use of polynomials and it was a particular type of polynomial known as the nth order Taylor polynomial. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at more examples and see if we can go ahead and rewrite certain Taylor polynomials as a series, which is a technique that we will take full advantage of in the next couple of sections. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and begin with another example. Example 2 here, we're being asked to find out the fifth order Taylor polynomial for f of x equals to the ln of x centered at a equals to 1. In this particular problem, I am telling you the a value. In the other problem, as we saw right now, I told you that it was centered at x equal to 0, but that's the same thing. You care about where you're centering or where are you basing off your, your approximation from. Now with this Taylor polynomial, we want to approximate the value of the ln of 1.5 and then compare it to its actual value. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. Since we're looking for the fifth order, that means that we need to go all the way to our fifth derivative. Now before I go ahead and start taking the derivatives, I'm gonna go ahead and write down the formula or the format that our polynomial should have, and it is the following. So we're gonna get p sub five of x is gonna be equals to f of one plus the first derivative evaluated at 1 times x minus 1 over 1 factorial plus the second derivative evaluated at 1 times x minus 1 squared over 2 factorial then the third derivative evaluated at 1 times x minus 1 cubed over 3 factorial then the fourth derivative evaluated at 1 times x minus 1 to the fourth over 4 factorial and last but not least since it's a first fifth order, we have the fifth derivative evaluated 1 times x minus 1 to the fifth divided by 5 factorial. So there we go. This is our fifth order polynomial approximation for f of x equals to the ln of x centered at a equals to 1. Now this of course is the general format, the actual polynomial. Well, let's go ahead and figure it out. And just as I did before, I'm going to go ahead and create a table with a function as well as its derivative. And then I'm going to go ahead and evaluate all of our functions and derivatives at x equals to 1, our a value. All right, so let's see what we get. Okay, so this is what I got here for my derivatives and my evaluations. So now that we have this, we are ready to plug things in. So we're going to have here p sub 5 of x is going to be equals to f of 1, which gave us a 0, plus the first derivative evaluated 1, which gave me a 1, times an x minus 1, plus, now the second derivative evaluated 1, which was a negative 1, times an x minus 1 squared divided by a 2 factorial, plus, and we had a 2 times x minus 1 cubed over 3 factorial, plus, next derivative here was a negative 6, times an x minus 1 to the fourth divided by a 4 factorial, plus, a 24 times x minus 1 to the fifth divided by a fifth factorial. Okay, now let's go ahead and simplify this to see what we get because we can go ahead and simplify the factorials here. So for my answer here for p sub 5 of x, we have x minus 1 minus x minus 1 squared over 2 plus x minus 1 cubed over 3 minus x minus 1 to the fourth over 4 plus x minus 1 to the fifth over 5. Now here's a question. Can we write this as a series? I think that we could write this one here as a series because there seems to be a pattern here with the denominators and the powers. And also, it seems like we are alternating sign. We start with a positive, negative, positive, negative. So let's see, what would be a way that we can write this polynomial as a series? Well, I'm thinking that we can go ahead and write this one here as the sum as our n goes from, well, we have five terms. So I'm going to say that the n is going from 1 to 5. Okay, so we have an alternating series. So I'm going to have a negative 1 raised to the n times, now we always have an x minus 1 in each of the terms, so I'll put here an x minus 1 raised to the n divided by an n. Is this pattern or is this series giving us the right pattern here? Let's see, we can try a couple ones. If n is equals to 1, then we would have negative 1 raised to the first power, uh-oh, that is giving us a negative number. So let's go ahead and fix this one here because we do want to get a positive. So it's an easy fix. All I'm going to be doing here is adding a 1 to the n as a power for the negative 1. Because now if n is equals to 1, then we would have a negative 1 squared, which is positive, 
times x minus one to the first power divided by one, looks good. Let's say if we try for n equals to three, then we would have a negative one raised to the three plus one times x minus one cubed, oops, divided by three. Is this giving us our third term? Well, negative one to the fourth is positive, checks out. x minus one cubed, got it, divided by three, okay. It all works out. So if we wanted to write this polynomial as a series, this would be our answer. So I'll write here as p sub five of x. Okay, now let's go ahead and answer the other question. We wanna use our polynomial approximation to approximate the value for the ln of 1.5 and see how it compares to with the actual value. So let's see, the ln of 1.5 is approximately what number and well, if we plug in the 1.5 into our polynomial, what should be our number? Now notice that for this example, it's not like I needed to think of some other x value or the x value to plug into our function, just as we did in this first example, because for this first example, we simply wanna figure out what is the ln of 1.5 and the function that we're using is the ln of x. So x is just 1.5 here. Okay. So I'm gonna go to Desmos, so we can take a look here at how does the function ln of x compares to the polynomial approximation centered at one. So let's take a look. Okay, so here we have the graph of ln of x in green. Now let's take a look how does our fifth order polynomial approximation look like in the region near x equals to one. And as you get to see here, our fifth order polynomial approximation in red, it seems like in the region near one, it looks like a very accurate approximation. Okay, well, what is the actual value though? The actual value for the function at 1.5 is 0 0.04054. Now for our polynomial approximation at 1.5, right over here, we get a 0 0.40729, which is pretty close, it's a nice estimate. Okay, so let's go back to our notes. Okay, so here we have our values. Now let's take a look at another example. So we've seen examples now with the e to the x, the ln of x. Now let's take a look at some trick functions. So for example three, we wanna go ahead and find out the 10th order Maclaurin polynomial for the f of x equals to the cosine of x. And we wanna go ahead and use this polynomial to approximate the value of the cosine of 0 0.5. Once we're done, let's compare it to the actual value. Okay, now before we begin, there's a couple of things that I wanna point out for this problem. Notice that compared to the other ones, this problem didn't tell you, hey, you're centered at a particular x or a value. However, this problem did tell us that we're dealing with a Maclaurin polynomial, which means that the value that we're centering at is zero. So we're centering at a equals zero. Okay, now the other thing that I also wanna point out here is that this time around, we're gonna be dealing with a 10th order. Is that gonna be a lot? Well, it's gonna depend. Okay, so. Rather than go ahead and write down the formula for the 10th order polynomial, I trust that you guys are now more familiar with it, so we've seen three examples now. So for this one, I'm just gonna go jump straight to the derivatives and the evaluations at a particular point. So this time around, our function is the cosine of x, and we are gonna be evaluating the function at the derivatives at a equals to zero, or x equals to zero, if you wanna call it that way. All right, so let's go ahead and figure out the derivatives. So for the cosine of x, the derivative is the sine of x with a negative here. Remember, anytime that you're taking the derivative of a trig function that starts with a c, our answer is negative. Then the derivative for the negative sine of x is going to be a negative cosine of x. Okay, taking the derivative again, the derivative now of a negative cosine of x is gonna be equals to a positive sine of x. Now for the fourth derivative, we're gonna get a cosine of x. But now look at that though, we started at a cosine of x, and now after four derivatives, we're back to the same original function, the cosine of x. And you might remember that whenever you're taking continuous derivatives or the sine or the cosine, there is a cyclic pattern to it. So your values are gonna be repeating every four derivatives. So I'm gonna stop here, and I'm gonna go ahead and calculate this, the fifth, sixth, and all the way to the 10th derivative, because I already know the pattern. So I'm just gonna put here that it repeats every four derivatives. Okay, now we still need to do the evaluations though. So let's see, evaluating all of this at a equals to zero, we're gonna get the following, 
cosine of zero is one, negative sine of zero is zero, negative cosine of zero is gonna be negative one, then back to a zero and back to a one. Okay, so this one here is giving us a nice pattern because there's a couple of zeros that are gonna be showing up every now and then. So let's see what would be the polynomial approximation then that's 10th order. Now for this one here guys, just so you guys notice how certain terms are gonna vanish, I'm gonna go ahead and write down everything. You don't have to copy it in your notes, but I want you guys to know where the pattern that we're gonna get is coming from. So this is the 10th order polynomial approximation for the cosine of x. Okay, so let's take a look at the coefficients. We're starting here with the cosine evaluated at zero, which was a one, then essentially plus a negative sign, but once we evaluate at zero, we get a minus zero, then a minus one, then another zero, then another positive one, and then again, remember, since it's a pattern of repeating terms every four, every four derivatives, then the next one here, the next one in the pattern, would have been, and I'm gonna erase this one here, the next one in the pattern, the fifth one, this would have been the fifth derivative, then the sixth derivative, seventh derivative, and back to the eighth derivative. And then the pattern would have continued, now for the ninth derivative, 10th derivative, and this is, we're basically stopping. Okay, now let's go ahead and simplify this further by getting rid of the terms that have a zero coefficient. Okay, so getting rid of those, we're gonna get the following. P sub 10 of x is equals to one minus x squared over two factorial plus x to the fourth over four factorial minus x to the sixth over six factorial plus x to the eight over eight factorial minus x to the 10 over 10 factorial which I think it has a nice pattern to it. So here's my question to you guys. Can we go ahead and write this one here as a series? There it goes, piece of 10. Okay, so for this one here, guys, I'm gonna let you pause the video and give it a crack at this. What would be the representation for this polynomial as a series? It's gonna be the sum as n goes from what to what of what general term? All right, guys, so pause the video, think about it, and when we come back, we're gonna take a look at the answer. Welcome back. So this is a series that I got. Hopefully it looks similar to yours, but if you were a little bit stuck on it though, I can give you a couple of hints. So the first thing that I noticed here was that my powers of n, or my powers of x, I'm sorry, were all even. And remember, whenever we're dealing with an even value, well, it's probably gonna be looking something like 2n. Now, it's the same thing here on the denominator, and that's why I have a 2n on my denominator as well. Now the denominator though had even numbers, in a factorial form, so I included the factorial. I also recognize here that, well, we do have an alternating sign. We start with a positive, negative, positive, negative, and so forth, so I knew that I needed to have a factor of negative one to the n. Now, the last thing to ponder is, okay, well, what should be our indices? Now, in the previous series with DLN, I chose to start it with n equals to one, but remember, we don't need to start at a particular index. We can always shift them around. So for this particular problem, I chose to start with an n equals to zero because well, my first term had a one, and I know that any number raised to the zero was one. So that's the main reason that I do it. That I did it this way. Could you start it with n equals to one? Yes, you could have started with an n value equals to one, but you would have have to change your ands here. Now I gave you a trick on how to appropriately change the indices and how is it gonna be affecting the general terms in, with the ends. I'll let you guys take a look at the notes for, I believe it was section 10.3, if you wanna refresh on that approach, but this one here looks like a good answer. Okay, now let's go ahead and see if we can use our polynomial approximation, which I'll label this one here as piece of 10, and see if we can approximate the value for the cosine of 0.5. So let's see here, piece of 10 evaluated at 0 0.5, it's gonna be approximately what? And what is the cosine value of 0 0.5? So, just as before, I'm gonna to go to Desmos to take a look at how does the cosine function look like and how does our polynomial approximation look like near x equal to zero. All right, so this is our cosine function, but now let's see how our 10th order approximation looks like when it's centered at zero. And there we go, here it is in blue, and it seems like near zero, 
it looks like a pretty good approximation here. In fact, it looks like a pretty good approximation all the way till negative, well, all the way between negative three and three. Now, past four and negative four, it does start to, well, lose some of the accuracy. However, we can make it even more accurate by taking a higher order approximation. Now, with that said, though, let's compare our values. So what would be the function value at 0.5? Well, the function value of 0.5 was 0 0.8775. And what about the polynomial approximation? Well, the polynomial approximation was 0 0.8775. So you see here, now these two answers are practically the same. So it's a very good approximation. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down our answers in our notes. Okay, so here are values. Now let's go ahead and take a look at another example here. Now this next example here is asking us to find out, okay, what is the nth order Maclaurin polynomial for f of x equals to the sine of x? Once we find out this polynomial, we want to use it to approximate the value for the sine of negative 0.5. Now, for this one here, guys, I'm going to let you try it on your own. I'm not going to work on it. I'm going to put this problem here as a discussion board for next week. You'll find that it's very similar to the one that we just tried. And hopefully, you get some good approximations. And also, though, you can also include, write it as a series. Okay. Now, the next example here, well, you see here that it's asking us to find out, okay, well, what would be the nth degree polynomial for the sine of x and cosine of x centered at a equal to zero? Now, lucky for us, we already did the cosine. I'll let you try the sine on the discussion board, as I just mentioned. But for the cosine, we're going to get the following. The cosine of x is the same thing as the series as k goes from 0 all the way to n from negative 1 to the k times x to the 2k divided by 2k factorial. Now the sine function, it's up for you to find out. I'll give you a hint though. Since the sine of x, well, the hint is that it's going to have some odd terms. The cosine had even ones, that's why I had 2k. But if we're dealing with odd terms, how can we do that? Well, it's going to be up to you how you define to how you choose to define your series. You could have maybe a 2k plus 1 or a 2k minus 1. Completely up to you. Okay. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and figure out another application for our polynomials approximations. Now, this one here, example 6, is asking us to use a quadratic polynomial to approximate the value of the square root of 1.06. Now, for the first part of the problem, and you want to, I want you to use the quadratic polynomial centered at a equals to 1. Now, notice that this problem is a little bit different than the other ones because, well, in the other ones, we were still being asked to find out, okay, what would be a polynomial approximation, but we were given the function. In this problem, though, yeah, we're not given the function. So if we're taking a look at the square root of 1.06, well, it seems like our function is the square root function. So our f of x should be, and in fact, I'll put in a different color, our f of x should be the square root of x, which I'll write here as x to the 1 half. Now, for this part, we're centering at a equals to 1, so we're going to need to evaluate our function and its derivatives at a equals to 1. Now, lucky for us, though, we're only going for a quadratic polynomial, so we're only going to second order. So what would be our first and second derivative? Well, the first derivative is going to be 1 half x times, or 1 half x to the negative 1 half, and our second derivative is going to be negative 1 fourth x to the negative 3 halves. Now, evaluating this one here at a equals to 1, it's a nice value to plug in, at a equals to 1, then we're going to get for the function value, we're going to get a 1. Then for the derivative, we're going to get a 1 half. And for the second derivative, we're going to get a negative 1 fourth. Okay, so for a polynomial approximation, then we're going to get p sub 2 of x is going to be equals to the function evaluated at 1, which was 1, plus the first derivative evaluated at 1, it was a 1 half, times x minus 1, plus, but now it's a negative, so I'll just put it here, it's a plus a negative 1 fourth times x minus 1 squared. Now, is that it? Careful, careful here, because remember, for the first problem, or for the first term, it was divided by 0 factorial, then 1 factorial, so it didn't really matter. But remember, starting with the quadratic term, or the second order, we do need to be very careful to make sure that we are including the factorials. All right, so we have a 4 times a 2 factorial. 
but two factorial is just two, so our polynomial approximation simplified is gonna be a one plus one half times x minus one minus one eighth times x minus one squared. All right, so now using our quadratic polynomial approximation, well, what will be the value of one point, or what would be the value for the square root of 1.06? So let's see, plugging our 1.06 into our function, I'll get approximately a 1.0296. Perfect. Alrighty, now, I want you to think about the next problem. What if we, instead of centering our value at a equals to one, what if we sent, what if we center it at zero? Would it really change our problem? Well, let's see. Okay, so now this time around, I am centering it at a equals to zero. But the thing is, I still want to figure out which one will be our function. Will our function still be the square root of x? Now, remember, the whole goal for the approximation problems here was to select a value that's near the point of interest. So right now, if I'm centering it at a equals to zero, but I want to figure out what would be the value for the square root of 1.06, well, I feel like I'm farther away to the 1.06. So if I just pick the square root of x, I don't think it's quite gonna work. So what I'm gonna be doing instead here is, I'm gonna go ahead and pick out another function, it's still gonna be the square root, but I wanna pick another function that's gonna give me a value that's closer to the 1.06 if I'm centering it at a equals to zero. And the value for that one, I'm thinking that an x plus one is gonna work much nicer here. Because now, I'm not a distance of, well, I guess centering it from, for the function, the square root of x, all the way to the 1.06, I would be off by a distance of 1.06. But if I pick the function, the square root of x plus one, and if I want to approximate the value for 1.06, then thanks to the plus one here, I would only be further away by 0.06. So that's much better. Okay, so with our new function, let's see what is gonna be our first and second derivative. So I'll just put it here, now making the table, and we're gonna be evaluating here at a equals to zero. Okay, now we we'll have here the first derivative. Oops, I missed the one half. First derivative is gonna be one half times x plus one raised to the negative one half times the derivative of the inside because it's a chain rule problem. So it's just times one. And our second derivative is gonna be equals to negative one fourth times x plus one raised to the negative, whoops, negative three halves times the derivative of the inside. Okay. A one plus one half times x minus one minus one eighth times x minus one squared. All right, so now using our quadratic polynomial approximation, well, what will be the value of one point, or what would be the value for the square root of 1.06? So let's see, plugging our 1.06 into our function, I'll get approximately a 1.0296. Perfect. Alrighty, now, I want you to think about the next problem. What if we, instead of centering our value at a equals to one, what if we sent what if we center it at zero? Would it really change our problem? Well, let's see. Okay, so now this time around, I am centering it at a equals to zero. But the thing is, I still want to figure out which one will be our function. Will our function still be the square root of x? Now, remember, the whole goal for the approximation problems here was to select a value that's near the point of interest. So right now, if I'm centering it at a equals to zero, but I wanna figure out what would be the value for the square root of 1.06, well, I feel like I'm farther away to the 1.06. So if I just pick the square root of x, I don't think it's quite gonna work. So what I'm gonna be doing instead here is, I'm gonna go ahead and pick out another function, it's still gonna be the square root, but I wanna pick another function that's gonna give me a value that's closer to the 1.06 if I'm centering it at a equals to zero. And the value for that one, I'm thinking that an x plus one is gonna work much nicer here. Because now, I'm not a distance of, well, I guess centering it from, for the function, the square root of x, all the way to the 1.06, I would be off by a distance of 1.06. 
But if I pick the function, the square root of x plus one, and if I want to approximate the value for 1.06, then thanks to the plus one here, I would only be further away by 0 0.06. So that's much better. Okay, so with our new function, let's see what is gonna be our first and second derivative. So I'll just put it here, now making the table, and we're gonna be evaluating here at a equals to zero. Okay, now we we'll have here the first derivative. Oops, I missed the one half. The first derivative is gonna be one half times x plus one raised to the negative one half times the derivative of the inside, because it's a chain rule problem. So it's just times one. And our second derivative is gonna be equals to negative one fourth times x plus one raised to the negative, oops, negative three halves times the derivative of the inside. Okay, now if you're still a little bit iffy on how do I know which function to, well, choose, remember if you remember, well, if you recall with the concept of linearization when you were doing those type of problems, it relied upon you knowing a value for the function that is near the point of interest. Now, evaluating our functions and derivatives at a equal to zero or x equal to zero, we're gonna get here a one, a one half, and a negative one fourth. Now notice here, it is still the same coefficients, but well, what would be the second order polynomial approximation then? Well, we're gonna get here a one plus one half x minus one fourth times x squared over two factorial, which is gonna to simplify to one plus one half x minus one eighth times x squared which is looking very similar to our other function here, but, well, are we gonna be getting the same values for the approximation? Well, we will, but once more, we have to be extra careful here because we need to think about which x value we're gonna be choosing. So, if we have x plus one equals to 1.06, then it seems like if we want to get the same values, x has to be equals to a point zero six. If we go ahead and let the polynomial well, the polynomial approximation be evaluated here at point zero six, you see here that we get pretty much the same value, one point zero two nine six. So it is the same thing. We're able to use approximations here with different functions, but we just have to be careful here on which functions we're selecting. We always have to be mindful of the function because that's gonna depend on the X values that you're gonna be plugging in. Alrighty, so this is it for part two for section 11.1. .1. We have one more section to cover, which deals with calculating the error for this approximations. So I'll see you guys in part three. Have a good one.